Where's Denver? Right there. Let's go. Last one for today. Only the survivors. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, the last one for today is from Watson in Denver, and they're going to talk. I'm not sure what G5 node is. So, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Right. Thanks uh, for showing up. It's, this is the, a re reproducible cloud native 5G node. My name is Watson, and we have Denver over here. With, uh, we're with a Volt Co-op. So uh, what are we going to go over today? I'm going to give you a background uh, behind the reproducible cloud native 5G node, which I'm calling RCNN for short. And we're going to talk about uh, what is an open source cloud native 5G node. So what is 5G? Uh, what is a RAN? What is cloud native in this context? And what do you need in order to uh, safely run a 5G node? And then we're going to give a demo. And we're going to talk, if we have time, about uh, what you can do with this project. And then we have some questions. So why did we do this? Uh, we work on a open source project called the CNCF uh, test suite, uh, which tests cloud native, so, I'm sorry, telecommunications software. Uh, we needed a RAN, which we're going to talk about later what that is, in order to do uh, a real test. We couldn't find one that was open source that just worked inside of Kubernetes. So we went ahead and made one. So what is a cloud native 5G node? Well, we know the trifecta of cloud native with um, immutable infrastructure, declarative uh, configuration, and microservices. Well, it's just putting a a 5G node inside of that architecture. And that's exemplified by containerizing that 5G node, which is a RAN and a 5G core, and putting it in Kubernetes. So what is 5G? Now this is the million dollar question for everyone who's outside of the space. So it's really a 3GPP specification. Um, there's lots of information in these specifications, but here's a high level of the uh, attributes of what comes out of that spec. You are supposed to be able to uh, have more connected devices over a 4G, uh, the 4G spec, uh, to a 5G node. Uh, it's a broader part of uh, the radio spectrum, and there's better security, there's supposed to be more interoperability, and um, there's a part of the spec which talks about ultra-reliable, low-latency connections as well. So these are all the benefits that you're supposed to get from a 5G implementation. What are the components of a 5G core? Get ready for lots of acronyms. You have the AMF, you have the SMF, you have the UPF, you have the NRF, you have the NSSF, and the PCF, a USF. These are all telecommunications acronyms. We're going to talk about some of these as I go forward. Um, some of them um, help with the interoperability of moving from 4G to 5G. And they're split out. So what is a 5G node? More specifically, a GNB or a G node B. Well, that is a that is a part of the network that's responsible for connecting the UEs, so that's the user equipment, so your phone, uh, to the evolved packet core, right? And um, it's really kind of the replacement for what was called the base station in the previous parts of telecommunications equipment. So when you have a G node B, it's assigned to a coverage area. And that coverage area for all of the UEs, so all the phones, you could say. And that's called a cell. So that's where you get 
cell phone. So we're going to talk a little bit more about this. So a 5G, what's the difference between 5G and 4G? And um, if you're outside of this space, uh, some people will say, I, didn't, I never noticed the difference between the two and all of this stuff. What's the big deal? Um, so here's more of the technical side. There's kind of many 5Gs uh, as far as compatibility and what's real 5G and not really 5G. So 5G, a 5G SA core, so that's standalone core, uh, is different than a 4G core. So how is that? Well, it first of all uses a service-based architecture. That's kind of, if you're in an enterprise space, it's kind of old school. It's not quite microservices. It's almost, but not quite. Um, you have control plane uh, functions that are uh, registered with what's called the NRF. That's the network repository function. This is really kind of what service discovery is supposed to be in the cloud native world. Um, but they did it their own way. And you have the AMF that handles connect the uh, uh, access mobility function handles connections. Um, this is starts this starts to be where the evolution between 4G and 5G is. So 5G had a lot wrapped up into what was called the MME component. A lot of that was separated out. Why is that important? Well, in order to try to have multiple vendors that can service each piece instead of having one vendor serve all of it, that's why they were trying to separate it out in these specs. Um, so the the G Node B connects di directly to the AMF, and we're going to be demonstrating the G Node B today. Then you have the um, authentication uh, uh, service function. That's what handles the SIM card in your phone and the subscriber, that portion of everything, which used to be in a totally different component that was wrapped up and tightly coupled in 4G. Then you have session management. That's where the, uh, it's handled by the SMF, which also was in the MME and the 4G, and you have a new functionality uh, called uh, network slicing hand handled by NSSF. Um, network slicing, you can kind of think of it like multi-tenancy. It's essentially like one of the things it could do is you can have service level agreements sp specific to a vertical, let's say. So if one vertical needs, um, you know, higher reliability or a faster bandwidth, you can, you can give that to them and not to another in the same node, supposedly. And then you have the PCF, that's the policy control function that's handling policies for charging and subscribers. So there you go. Now you know what 5G SA really is, or some of it. So what is a RAN? Uh, and this can be confusing at first. So. The first thing about Iran is this, there's hardware, it's a radio. Uh, we're going to use a universal software radio peripheral, which is a, uh, a kind of software-defined radio. But first things first is it's hardware. Then it's software, the drivers. So the drivers specific to that radio, we're using a B200 Edis. Then you have the RAN software, which is what configures the hardware to, for many things, but one of the things to emit 5G on, on the 5G band and do it in such a way where it's uh, compliant with 5G. So now for the cloud, cloud native portion, taking all of that, containerizing it, putting in Kubernetes. And then one extra note about a RAN, there's a movement called ORAN, Open RAN, which is from out of the um, ORAN Alliance. What they're trying to do is create specifications for interfaces between hardware components and some software components in order to create kind of a blueprint for vendors to be interoperable. It's more more or less not really implemented uh, as much as they would like at this point in time, but that is the hope. So how do you safely run a 5G node? Well, first thing, 
you need a Faraday cage. So this is what keeps uh, radio waves and electronic emissions from getting out or coming in. And you want to do that because it's actually disruptive to broadcast on the 5G spectrum. People can call 911, that kind of thing. So it's actually illegal. So you need a five, uh, Faraday cage to do this. You need a 5G core. We talked about that. We're using open 5GS, everything we're using open source. You need a radio. We're using the B200. You need the software for that radio. So we're using SRS RAM. And you need a phone with a 5G modem in it. I have a slide talking about the differences here, but we may not get to it. But that's important. Um, and there, some say they're 5G and they're not. So something to be concerned about. We're using the OnePlus 10P, uh, 10T, so that's going to work. You need a programmable SIM card, and you need a card reader writer, SIM card reader writer. This is the overview of or a diagram of what we, what we have here and what you could do if you wanted to. It's a Faraday cage, and the only thing that's outside of the Faraday cage is that back hole at the bottom which connects to the internet. Inside of Faraday cage, you've got Kubernetes, it's a really kind cluster, you've got pods, you've got SRS RAN in one pod, and you've got um, Open5GS, which is a set of pods in the other uh, part of this diagram. And then outside of the node, you have the B200, that's the radio, the equipment, the hardware, and you have a OnePlus 10T. All of that is inside of the Faraday cage. So now we're gonna do the demo. So right now we're connecting the uh, B200 and we're in a Zoom connected to the 5G node, which is this Dell over here that he's laying inside. And we're closing the Faraday cage. All right, so yeah, we've got Faraday cage here and in there we've got the radio phone and then I got my laptop here Ethernet connected to the box and that's essentially the back wall out to the internet and then on here so this is a, a zoom remote control zoom session into the, the laptop that's in the Faraday cage so we can do whoops not that There we go. All right, so first thing we're going to do is um, start the radio. All right, so this here is, um, this is a kubectl git pods of all the 
um, containers we've got running. So you can kind of see here, you've got our, our Open 5GS core, which is our 5G core. And then we've also got SRS RAM, which is the SRS RAM container. So that's the GNOD B. That's what's essentially controlling the, um, the hardware radio. This here is we're running inside the um, the container that's running the SRS RAN. So we're just going to start the Geno B. Essentially, this is going to start the the radio. And so this is this part here. It's loading firmware drivers and everything, and starting the broadcast. And then now that that's running, what we can do is go to the phone. I'm just going to turn the phone onto airplane mode and switch it off. And then up the top here, you kind of see that it just switched over to a 5G network. And I'm just going to try and make a phone call now from my phone to the phone number of the, the phone in the, in the Faraday cage. <laughs> On the screen, you can see it calling. You see it, yeah. So that's the phone phone call coming in, essentially. So we could answer that, and would have a phone call in over our own five G network that's going in through the back wall. All right. Thank you, Denver. Now, how do you install this thing? Essentially, you got your usual sub, uh, uh, suspects. You have uh, installing kind, and then um, installing a repo called the Open Verso repo for Open 5GS. That's the core, uh, but you have to use our values when you do that. Then you need to install the SRS RAN. Uh, with uh, with our manifest that we have there, um, and that's going to be specific to the equipment. So this is the B200, and it's the band that we're using, which is band three, uh, which will the 10T or one plus 10T works with. Other phones work with different ones. That's where just probably you want to go ahead and use the same phone we're using. Uh, and then this uh, you'd want to do a cube cuddle exec in order to start the GNOD B. What can you do with this thing? All right, so you can play with different 5G bands safely, like CBRS. Has anyone here heard of Helium at all? You've heard of Helium? So that's a, they, they use CBRS in that project. So it's kind of 5G, but not. It's just the band, but they're not doing what we what's called a standalone. Um, so they're doing non-standalone. Uh, so it's really 4G, actually. But we can test interoperability. That's what we're doing. That's what we want to use it for. You can enhance your understanding of 5G networks, uh, which is different than the RAN. You can also understand and learn about RAN components. You can experiment with the IoT on the 5G band. Uh, you can you can test uh, high reliability, low latency projects like X apps in the RAN. 
which is a hot thing within telco. And you can experiment with network slicing, like I said before, it's kind of like, in a way, multi-tenancy. Uh, what is private 5G? This is the main use case uh, for playing around with something like this, probably. Um, basically, it is when you have some entity, individual, most likely a business, they license part of the 5G spectrum, and they use it within a restricted area, like a warehouse or a parking lot or something. Um, why would you want to do that? Well, remember, 5G allows for higher connectivity, a, a higher uh, concentration of devices. And then, um, so one use case for that is smart manufacturing. All the robots, all the IoT devices within a manufacturing facility. Also hospitals, that's another one. Another use case is the ultra-reliable low-latency use case. So robots oftentimes, in, in smart manufacturing, sometimes they require uh, low latency and high reliability. Definitely drones, there are one that requires that. Um, and then again, medical devices. So our roadmap uh, for this uh, thing is uh, we want to integrate into CICD pipelines. We want to integrate to some of the testing frameworks out there. Project Silva is one, um, the, at, and the CNF test suite is one that we work on. We want to have other demonstrations of this. So what does it look like for cloud native observability be, to be applied to a 5G node? Uh, we don't have that here. We'd like to demo that. Also, chaos testing. Ecosystem collaboration, like I was saying, a test harness for the 3G PP specs for 5G, making it so that you can test and mock and stub out components, and then a vendor can put one component in, like UPF or something, and then test to see if it's actually interoperable. Right now, oftentimes vendors, it's all or nothing. One vendor will supply all of it, and maybe one or two, and it should be plug and play. Same thing for ORAN. Uh, open RAN, that's really about the interfaces between the hardware. We want to test that as well. And then also within Telco, there's heterogeneous cluster uh, use case. Basically, a lot of the uh, towers that you see out there, they actually have different hardware specs. So they have hetero different um, clusters, uh, Kubernetes clusters in them. and they uh, have different configurations because the hardware is different. They call it dimensioning within telco. Um, so we want to maybe, um, there's, a, there's a project called Nephi out, th out there that tries to handle this use case. We want to be able to, uh, we want to write a uh, kept sp uh, package for our CNN and so that it can help test canary deployments and uh, chaos testing, just deploy deploying to heterogeneous uh, environments. All right, and uh, you can connect with us on the, um, the CNCF test suite uh, repo, and uh, we also have a meetup group, uh, Austin Software Cooperatives, at, and uh, at Volt Co-op uh, co on Twitter, and Hal at uh, Volt Co-op on email. All right, Thanks. thank you. <laughs> We have some time for questions. Anyone? Great talk. Thanks. That uh, makes me understand a few of the things that you've been doing for a while to see how it all puts together. Um, how much is the test rig uh, dependent on that particular radio? Can you swap out? A different SDR for this, like is you're gonna, you're gonna have to recompile the UHD drivers per SDR. Uh, the uh, these UHD drivers, evidently, they're they are generic, but you have to compile you have to compile them per. SDR. And I guess the other question is, you're doing this all in a Faraday cage. Do you have access to any spectrum to do some of this in the wild so that you could actually do some of the testing that you would need to do to you know deal with weak radios or distance limitations or 
traveling I, between cells or anything. I wish. You want to <laughs> give us some access? I'll work on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Anyone else? Because oh. uh, I didn't get it, uh, how did the external phone connect with the one inside? Like wh somewhere there must have been a phone, gateway. The phone is inside. Yeah, the but, cage. but there, is, there is the network. Yeah. You're like private network and the phone was running in the, I guess, real network or... See the backhaul there? That's connected to the internet. This thing, that's an Ethernet cable. So we we wired the. This is a Dell. Yep. Ethernet out here, so it's doing a connection and, and, through and Ethernet the call, safely. And the call, like from the phone of your friend from outside, how did it connect to the inside? So it's going over the internet. So we did a WhatsApp call. Okay, so WhatsApp call, not a yeah. cell phone. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. then I get it. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. Cool. yeah, cool. All right. If that's it, uh, that was the last one for today. Thank you very much again, Watson Denver.